Hey, welcome to the channel where we show you how to put some prep in your step. Today we're going to talk about multi-row calculations in Tableau Prep released in Tableau 2023.2 in the latest version. Uh, this is a great addition to the tool that we've been looking forward to for a long time. It's going to allow you to do moving averages, things like percent difference, and bake those into your uh, table. And so I want to take a look at that, dive into it, and then just take talk about what are the pros and cons of it? What are some things that we'd like to see improved on it in the future? So let's dive in. So this is the page that Tableau has put out there as far as, you know, these are some use cases, uh, some examples on how to navigate the new UI and uh, even how to type that calculation in yourself. So if we scroll down a bit here, uh, like I said, you've got difference from, you've got percent difference. And then if we scroll down just a little bit further, we will see the uh, sample, the sample text that they've put in there that you could copy and paste. This is the actual uh, calculation itself. Uh, so let's take a look in prep and see what that looks like. So uh, this is the sample Superstore data set. You can find it in the bottom left corner when you open up Tableau Prep. That way you can work with the same data set and take a look at this similar use case. Um, but yeah, we're going to use this to just kind of take a look at a real simple uh, just layout and overview of this uh, moving calculation uh, UI that they've implemented. And so uh, what I've got here is I've got some uh, orders data down to the product level. And so if I wanted to do an analysis of just the category sales uh, by year and start to look at difference from a year over year analysis, I'm going to group by my year of sale in my category and then use sum of sales as my aggregate. Um, so this will just give us a nice clean field to work with or data set to work with that's just got year, category, and sales amount. Um, so from here what I can start to do is you know let's say I wanted to create a calculation um, to look at the difference in sales from the previous year. Uh, so I want to look at difference in sales between 2016 to 2015 for each category. So I'm going to click on my little ellipses here and I'm going to go down to create calculated field and we can see we've got some new options here. We've got difference from, we've got percent difference from, and then we've got moving calculation. Uh, so I'm going to use difference from, it's going to bring up my visual calculation editor. And here uh, this is going to sort of build out that calculation for us. So since I want to look at each category and the year-over-year -year sales between each category, I'm going to use category as my group by field and I'm going to use the year of sales to order that data. I need to be able to tell Tableau where am I looking for this data or how am I looking for it. So I'm going to select year of sale and it's going to default that to an ascending order and it gives us a preview for how it's laying out that data and so we're using sales and using that previous value and so it gives us uh, a little preview of what's actually happening so we can see uh, row B and row A and to do this calculation Tableau is taking row B and subtracting row A to give us our uh, difference in sales between 2016 and 2015 for the category of technology. And so we'll go ahead and leave that there. And as we can see, when we expand this out, now we can see here's the difference uh, year over year for each category. So we'll call this difference from previous year. And there we go. So this is a calculation that you'll use a lot when you're creating KPI cards. Um, trying to create little up or down arrows or even color indications on trends and so it's something that workbooks can get really bogged down with performance wise and so now you can bake it into the prep flow and free up some of that performance um, hopefully resulting in some snappier workbooks now when we go to the changes if we hover over the text of the calculation it'll show us here's what is actually happening uh, and how that calculation is formed if you were to write it out so you are uh, partitioning by each category, uh, so restarting every category, and then uh, ordering by that year of sales in an ascending order, and then using the lookup function. So the lookup function is really what's been added here to create this moving calculation, this multi-row calculation. So now lookup, which is something you've 
uh, worked with, if you've worked with table calculations in Tableau Desktop, that function allows you to look at previous rows or uh, rows coming up next to be able to compare those values next side by side to each other on the same row. So that's what's happening here. We're just taking by saying lookup sales with a lookup value of zero. That is the sales value on the current row. And then the lookup sales with a negative one value, that is to look up the sales from the previous row. And we can take those and subtract them from each other to get that difference from previous. So, you know, it's a great way to try and reverse engineer that and uh, customize it a little bit more, uh, make it work for how you want it to work, or just really become familiar in general with table calculations and increase your knowledge on how you could implement things like this, at least from the lookup function on the desktop side. So we've got some more options here. So if I click here, and look at create a calculated field. Now we can do percent difference from. And so again, I want to uh, look at that year over year by category. And now it still shows us that little preview of what's actually happening here. So it's taking row B and it's subtracting row A and then it's dividing it by that row A value to get that negative 9% amount. So again, um, now we can use this visual editor to quickly create that calculation, bake it into our data set, and make it a part of our KPIs uh, without having to create tons and tons and tons of calculations in the workbook to achieve the same effect. Um, so I really like how it gives you that little B minus A over A to really uh, use those visual cues to demonstrate here's what's actually happening with this calculation. So I think it's really good how they've put this uh, visual editor together. And it makes sense that we've got null values here too, because um, in the year of 2015, there is no row to look backwards at. Uh, so you would get a null value because anytime you try to add or subtract uh, a null value together, it's going to give you no. Uh, so makes sense how that's laid out and you would see a similar result in the Tableau desktop whenever you're using the lookup function based on are you telling it to look up previous values, how many previous values, and does that exist in your data set. Um, so we took a look at the difference from and then we took a look at the percent difference from. So uh, you know again you hover over it, you got that option there to see here's how the calculation is being put together. Now if I were to go and click the edit button, it pops up the visual calculation editor again, which makes sense, uh, but I would really like to be able to um, just quickly interact with that calculation or copy it and paste it in a new calculation to be able to edit it. So I think it makes sense ultimately why they configured the UI like that because if you're not familiar with the lookup functions uh, or partitions and order by you probably want to go quickly back to that visual editor um, but the more familiar you get with it the more you'll probably want to really customize that calculation make it your own and maybe it becomes a little bit quicker to just type it out uh, so I think maybe in the future that's uh, some kind of improvement that could be there just just some option for us to choose do we want to use the visual editor or use to type in the calculation um, but we can see we've got some more options here so if I've got a moving calculation and I want to group it by the same things I want to group it by category and uh, I want to order it by the year of sales ascending uh, this is going to allow us to do moving sums and moving averages and so we can see uh, it will show us here's your aggregation which is sum and then the values are uh, comparing the previous one to the current one and adding those two together uh, and we can also change do we want to add the previous two values do we want to add the previous three values do we want to add the previous two um, with the next value so we can modify exactly how we're doing this so if I were to say I want to do previous one and then also add the next one to it now we've got that moving sum or I could say you know what I don't want to uh, add anything I just want to see what the previous value is uh, and reference that in the same row to do more comparisons I can exclude the current value and that will just show me what that previous one or the previous two value was uh, so I can have that in my same row now if I wanted to do a moving average, just change that to average and say 
uh, you know, how many periods am I including in that? Am I just including previous periods? Am I including previous and next periods? What do I want that uh, moving average to look like? So again, something that we can pretty nicely bake in and use uh, to do some trends analysis and seasonality and uh, make sure that we're optimizing the performance on the workbook side as much as possible. Uh, so uh, I think one thing that I was hoping to see in here that I didn't was a running sum. So when I thought multi-row calculations, I thought uh, running sum, maybe that's some functionality we can include in here. But this is just a moving sum. So I can uh, select some values and it is going to move that sum based on how it can reference that previous one or previous two rows. Um, and so if you see though, it is with the default configuration, it's taking that current row and adding the previous row. And as it moves, it's continuing to take that current row and add it to the previous row. So gives that moving calculation effect. I was hoping to see that more running some, that compiling over time. Um, so maybe that's an option that, that we can take a look at that uh, maybe in the future if there's enough need or use cases for it. Um, but there are certainly ways to still achieve that, even though it might not be as dynamic as we were hoping. So what I did here was I uh, calculated a lookup value to try and see if it would work. So I said, let me find the minimum year by using an LOD to say fixed at the table, give me the minimum year, which in this case is 2015. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to subtract the current year from the minimum year to give us that negative value because I wanna look back. I wanna to try to dynamically look backwards in the data set. So I've got that dynamic lookup value, but when I tried to use that in the lookup calculation, it gave me some errors basically saying, that you can't use dynamic fields in that calculation. It has to be a static or hard field of you know zero or negative one. I can see why you could maybe potentially run into some issues where you're kind of causing the data to loop on itself. Uh, so I can see why they did that, but it's just a functionality I was hoping to work with. And so what I did here instead to achieve that same result was since I can't dynamically do it, I just said, okay, I've got a couple of years of data in here. So let me uh, create each of these values separately so I can achieve that same running sum effect. So first I created the sales from three years ago by saying partitioning at the category. Uh, when I think of partition, I think of restarting. So restarting for each category, segmenting each category as its own. I'm going to order that data now that each category is separate. I'm going to order now by the year of sales in an ascending order and find the sales value from three rows back or three years ago in this case. Now, the only value in the data set that has a valid uh, amount that it can look back to three years ago is the year 2018. Um, because we've got 2015 and 2018, that year we can say what was the amount from three years ago, it's 280, but 2017, 2016, and 2015 have no data to reference and those amounts are null. And so I want to come around that issue of getting a null as a result when I add these fields together. So I can just go in and replace the null value with zero. And I can do the same thing to do sales from two years ago. And so I can say, again, when partitioned by category, order by year of sales ascending. And now I'm gonna look two rows back or two years ago and find out what that amount is. And so as we would expect, 2017 and 2018 have valid results. 2016 doesn't because there is no 2014 data. 2015 doesn't because there is no 2013 data. And so I've got those two values and I wanna make sure again, I don't have any null values when I try to do my addition to combine all of the columns. And so I'll go in and replace those with a zero. Lastly, I wanna get my sales from the previous year. And so I'll just take the same calculation, but instead of a negative two, I'm gonna use a negative one to say I'm looking at the previous row, or in this case, the previous year. And so now I only have one null value, which would be for 2015. I'm gonna replace that with a zero. Now we can see the amount here for 2015 is 254. So we would expect the uh, other three columns there to be zero, because that's our starting point for the running sum, since that's our first year in the data set. Uh, so that's what we would expect to see. And so now 
if we were to create a calculation to say let's add all of those fields together from the three years ago, two years ago, previous year, and current, now we've got our running sum. And so if we look at 2015, we should have the amount for that year. But then once we get to 2016, what we get is we get the amount for the current year and we are adding the previous year to it, which is reflected there in our previous year sales on the same row. And so by adding those two together, we get the 535 amount. Same for 2017, we're adding the 325 to 255 and 280, which we've put on the same row by using that lookup function. So two years ago is 280, 255 is previous year. And adding those three together, we get 861. And same thing for the last year. We're able to take and reference all four years and add them together in one row to get that running sum. So it's not as dynamic, it's manual. Uh, you have to go in and type out those calculations. You would have to update it if this was something you were putting in production. Um, and it's something that you can achieve by using a self join, taking the data, joining it back to itself to get that running sum. Uh, that method today is still a little bit more flexible. It would allow you to um, just, you know, all you really have to do in that case is ensure that the join conditions are happening properly. Um, and so, you know, there's pros and cons to doing it either way, but um, this way you can kind of see those values on the same row, see what that looks like, and um, maybe even do some more analysis there. But it is some functionality doing some kind of running sum that I would like to see implemented at some point um, but I think overall this update is great using multi-row calculations is going to just allow us to continue to see this tool grow uh, allow the capabilities of what they can do with this type of logic um, to expand what kind of use cases we can fit into it so if you're using multi-row calculations let me know let me know how it's feeling for you uh, if it's solving your problems um, if there's a different way you'd like to interact with it or you know I like I said I was looking for running some maybe there's something that you're looking for that it hasn't been able to quite achieve let me know what that is and um, I'd love to just see how you're using it and see what this continues to grow into uh, but that is all I have for today and I hope to see you in the next one